Hi there, Alex Kidman here, and I'm a human being. You've probably worked that out already, but like most human beings, sometimes I just do ridiculous things. I make ridiculous choices with my life and with my money. And I did that recently with a purchase from AliExpress. Now, AliExpress, as you're probably aware, sells a whole bunch of mostly Chinese factory goods, uh, often an awful lot of knockoffs and slightly dodgy products as well. But this one particularly caught my eye, but I kind of have to set the scene for this before I unveil it. So, as you're probably aware, an awful lot of the world's technology gets made in China. And that is what it is. I'm not going to get into the geopolitics of it all. But it is what it is. And often, these are products that are made for big brand names, but produced by smaller factories. So, a factory will make a thing, a manufacturer will slap their logo or their software logo on it or whatever, and then it gets sold to you at a slightly marked up price. But what has happened an awful lot in recent years is that a lot of those factories have gone, well, hang on, we're already making the tech widget and selling it to the big brand company, why don't we just sell the tech widget ourselves? Which they do. But of course, there's an issue here because a lot of Chinese factory names are not going to translate terribly well into English or sound terribly good. And of course, an awful lot of people would struggle to pronounce something like, say, this if it was presented to them. So what they do is they adopt other company names, but there's only so many of those to go around and there's trademark and copyright issues to deal with. So what you increasingly see, and this is not just on AliExpress, this is on Amazon, for example, there's tons and tons of these, are uh, products that just have these multiple lesser, almost unpronounceable, you know, XQQYJ3QQZ brand product. These amazing product names that are presumably there to avoid these kinds of trademark and product description issues. And I'd long wondered, are these actually just someone hammering on a keyboard or is someone using software to randomly generate them and then just check them against the database to make sure that someone else hasn't taken it over? And then I kind of got confirmation that that's almost certainly what happened with today's product, which is just a portable monitor. I didn't really need a portable monitor. I didn't expect a portable monitor that I was going to buy from AliExpress would be any good. But check out this product name. I mean, how could I not? I had to know whether or not there was actually a product out there with no end name null as the brand name. So I didn't end up paying very much for it, but I ordered one and I waited for something to arrive. And it's arrived. And um, yeah, so, so far there's, there's no indication of that product name, unfortunately, on the exterior packaging, but maybe maybe this is just exterior packaging and there'll be something shiny on the inside. So I'm going to flick over to my desk to open this one up and find out what's inside. So the only thing I should point out that I've done so far is actually take the shrink wrap that arrived off, and that was larger because it had my address label on it. I already know where I live and you don't need to know that. And otherwise we've got these rather standardised stickers. I should note that it tells me that uh, to avoid danger of suffocation, keep this bag away from babies and children. Do not use this bag in cribs, beds, carriages, or playpens. This bag is not a toy. Also, importantly, not a bag, it's a box. But uh, let's see if I can't get it open. Uh, I'm gonna treat this very much like one of my standard unboxings in that I genuinely, legitimately haven't even looked inside this thing as yet. And it's just gonna be as you find it, as I shoot it as I show how bad I am at opening a box on camera. This is just thrilling YouTube content that's gonna drive the algorithms wild, I'm sure. I'm also trying not to drop or break things because this was cheap, you know, AliExpress and all that, but, and indeed, uh, well, there's a pity. It's just called portable monitor. And it's just a cable and a monitor and what I'm guessing is a little stand for it. Let's see if it's a manual. Will have the branding for me. Please, 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 please. Come on, come on, come on. The manual states this is a plug and play monitor, there's no driver. Blah, 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 blah. This is how it works, this is how it works, this is how it works. Yeah, there's no copyright or branding on this whatsoever. This is, this is as generic as it comes, and I am a little bit disappointed. I might have to see if I can print up a little no and name sticker to go on. Oh, I suppose that's always possible, of course. Hang on, I have not actually looked at the monitor itself. That's gonna be a very, very standard little USB-C cable there, but maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be some branding on this thing. Will the gods smile on me? 
Will I ever get this blue plastic off? And the answer is... Da, 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 no. Nope. Nope, that's all just as standard and generic as they come. I will get to testing this. I may as well actually see whether or not it's any good, even if it is a literal no-name product. Its name is no. So I'll be here to testing it, and uh, I'll append that to the end of this, actually. So the good news here is it switches on. It does actually display an image, which is not always assured when you're buying this kind of thing from AliExpress. But here we are. That being said, this is probably making it look better than it actually is because as soon as you adjust angles, and YouTube probably isn't going to represent this very well, it washes out really quickly, which is absolutely par for the case for these kinds of TFT screens. The resolution isn't great. The speakers are just painful. Amusingly, the product manual actually refers to a different model than this one, and I know that because it has these controls on the side, but it uses a completely different setup to show what those controls are. And while those look like they let you do a lot of stuff, and I mean, they sort of do, none of it is terribly satisfactory, let's put it that way. Plus, I gotta say, this little button in the side here, my goodness, it's painful to use. And I mean painful as in, it physically hurts to have to tap it. If you're trying to select something, actually getting it to respond is hard, but it is physically painful as well. But yeah, I can connect a whole bunch of stuff. So this is just a YouTube video on my own, of course, uh, running through a MacBook, but it'll work just fine with Windows. It'll even work fine with something like the Switch. And when I say fine, I mean, it operates. There's some weird quirks there. I'll show you what that looks like. So here we have the Switch working and it is working although with a couple of caveats. So you have to have an externalized power source plugged in, otherwise the screen will come up, but it won't detect a signal. And you can't have Joy-Cons connected to the switch because otherwise those won't respond and you can't really pair anything else to get working. So this is with an external controller and an external battery pack, and then it will work. And it is this kind of weird compromised thing now where some things will work, some things won't. So for example, I could get a, a Pixel 9 Pro to connect up and screen mirror, but Samsung DeX refused to work. It, it refused to accept the resolution of the display as it happens. I couldn't quite work out a way, well, if there was even a way to get past that. I don't know that I'd bother, to be honest with you. So that's kind of where it's at. It, it functions, I guess. I'll probably use it for some kind of retro product build, maybe. I'll put it to some use, I won't let it waste because that's the worst thing you can do with technology. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a thing. But of course, there is one other question and disappointment to deal with. Because of course, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Alex, you must be disappointed. You wanted a no end name null monitor, not a generic one, and you didn't ultimately end up with what you wanted there. Well, yeah, and no. See, the thing with generic products like this is that they are very much made to be branded. An awful lot of what you will see from some big brands will be these kinds of generic products that get some level of quality assurance, you'd hope, but also then the vendor's badge put on the back of it. This happens all the time. And the thought struck me that, hey, if they're not going to use this valuable and innovative no end name branding themselves, what's to stop me doing that? So now I have, in fact, what is for now, the world's only no end name null product because they're not using the brand. And certainly if they wanna come after me, we can discuss terms on using this valuable label that I've printed here on future products. Something tells me they won't be in touch.